Hello and welcome. This is going to be the first part of a series of videos about the CYC X1 Pro Gen 2 motor. And since this came straight from China, it only took about five days to get here. Um, here being Southern California, really can't be too careful right now. So safety first. All right, let's do it. Looks like pretty good package. The outside of the box was taped together very well. No damage during shipping. The box wasn't even banged up. Which is pretty good considering half the packages I get that come within the United States are all shit. All right, so first off, we've got a bag full of what looks like the torque sensing pedal assist, uh, a couple of brake cutoff sensors. Next, we have got the chain ring. I opted for the mid-size chain ring, which is the 63 tooth. This was the largest one I could fit on the bike I have. The current bike I want to put this on is a 2011-2012 Turner DHR. It's a downhill mountain bike with about 8 inches of travel. And the current chain ring on there, I believe it was a 32 tooth, which is pretty similar to this diameter. Um, any bigger than that, we're going to hit the rear triangle of the frame. So this should work. A nice little carbon fiber motor cover, little bit of fingerprints and grease on it, but nothing that can't be wiped off. It's not scratched or anything. And the chain was going to leave in there because that looks like it has some kind of lube on it. And here is the good stuff. All right. Here we have the display. It's going to be a little handlebar mounted display. Seems like it's made from a pretty good quality plastic. Uh, to be honest, I was kind of expecting the motor and the controller to be really, really good, along with the bottom bracket and the torque sensing. And some of the peripheral displays I have heard have been a little bit cheaper. Um, cheaper meaning they just feel like a cheap plastic. They're not good quality buttons or connectors. However, so far, this seems like it's pretty good. All right. And here is the best part, as hardware is already falling out. Hmm. Got the little motor bracket. This is going to go around the down tube of the bike. Um, wasn't particularly too big of a fan on the way this would put pressure on the down tube, so I think we're going to have to get the 3D printer out to make some kind of adapter to go from the circular frame to the square shape of this bracket. I'd imagine after hitting a couple good bumps, the weight of this motor could easily put a dent in the bike. Not ideal. I do like the wire loom they've used. Seems like that's something new with the Gen 2. A uh, decent quality heat shrink on there. And what looks like a spark arrested XT90. Yeah, it says XT90 right on the connector. Motor wires seem to be very shielded with an appropriate gauge wire, some bullet connectors with covers. And then we've got a couple sensor wires here. like there's a little bit of fuzz left over from whatever they used to clean it. No big deal. Overall, this looks pretty good. There are some minor scratches on the case of the motor here, but that doesn't matter. It's very, very minor stuff. I'm sure on the first try out, it is going to get more damage than that. Very interesting clear cover on the back of the motor so you can see all the windings. It looks like you can see the end of the magnets there. Supposedly on the Gen 2 version and on the later versions of the Gen 1, those magnets have an upgraded epoxy or glue they use to hold them on. Initially, from some of the reviews I was looking at, people running higher voltages and higher RPMs did have problems with those magnets coming off. 
Uh, that was only under extreme circumstances, and it looks like they have fixed that. According to CYC, there is a new tested glue they've used. Uh, they tested it up to 12,000 or higher RPMs, which I don't think I'm going to be getting up that high with this motor. I do have a 72 volt battery, but it is three 22 volt batteries in series. So I'll probably run two to start with to see how this works. And I get the feeling two 22 volt batteries, so 44 volts total is going to be plenty of power. Anything past that, I'll probably be ripping bike chains apart. All right, so there's the motor. Looks good. We've got some more miscellaneous hardware kind of hanging out on the bottom here. So we'll find what that goes to later. I opted for the half twist throttle option. Uh, I've been riding motorcycles my whole life, and one time I got on a quad with one of those thumb press throttles. It was the worst thing I've ever done. Every little bump you hit, you unintentionally pull your thumb down to hit the throttle. This might just me being stupid, but I like twists, so we've got a twist throttle. Seems fairly durable so far. The plastic is solid. There's nothing creaking or cracking as you move it around and flex it. It is a hard plastic with a little rubber adapter on the end here. Um, it's not very soft at all, so we might have to find some dirt bike grips or something that can stretch over that. And now the bottom bracket with torque sensor. It's a very interesting piece. Let's see if we can get an Allen key and take off one of these crank arms. So, as I was aware of before, and not too ideal, is the square bottom bracket axle in the middle. Most standard mountain bikes these days have some kind of spline on there. Um, this square does have me a little bit concerned. If you're really romping on the pedals, it's not the best geometry in order to prevent this crank arm from stripping out. I'm pretty sure this is some kind of aluminum, which is a softer metal. So I could see having a good strike on the cranks or really cranking away. Long-term durability could be an issue. So here's the CYC one, and this is a Shimano Saint crank set. Let's see if we can get this apart here. So when I say a splined bottom bracket axle, this is what I'm talking about. You can see the small grooves in there line up with the small grooves in here, and there's some kind of clamping mechanism that tightens it down in the spline. This is a much more durable system. However, I'm sure they have thought about this and went with this. I'm sure this is cheaper to manufacture. Splining something like this does cost more. So hopefully, maybe even I can come up with some kind of way to get a shaft spline to put in there, make it more durable. Um, for now, let's just run this stock as is. I kind of want to see how far we can go before we break something. Cause I got this bike kit, the motor kit, with the intention of riding it hard. I'm not going to commute with this. I'm not going to need it to run forever. I want to set it up at three, 4,000 watts of power and ride it hard. I don't need this to get you know work every day. I don't care if it goes 50 miles on a charge. I want to put a smile on my face the second I twist that throttle. I have ridden several other e-bikes, hub motor e-bikes that were lackluster. Um, they weren't really meant for romping on it. They were more commuter type bikes uh, in the range of thousand watt, give or take, which is fine if you're cruising a little pedal assist or something, but uh, not exactly uh, exhilarating. So hopefully this is going to be the answer to 
what I'm looking for. And now that I've covered my gloves and grease from the Shimano Saint cranks, take two. All right, back, clean gloves. Cool, moving on. Put this guy back on here, put the screw back in. And I think that is everything that came in the box. All right. Oh man, I just heard something hit the floor. There we go. So initially, this looks like a pretty solid kit. The materials feel great. I think it was well thought out from the design specs I was looking at online. The extra money you have to pay to get this, I do believe is worth it. Uh, my previous electric motor kit I was looking at was the uh, Cyclone 3000 watt, which is a lot of power and it is cheap. It is really cheap. However, it seems too cheap. It doesn't have a lot of engineering behind it, it looks like. The motor seems solid, the design seems solid. However, you, do, you have to do a lot of work yourself to make it fit and work properly, which I don't mind. But I think the smaller package of this was much more appealing to me. Um, it's a lot more power potentially, and it does come with a better controller and also an app that you can interface with your phone. I have an Android phone, so hopefully we can get that downloaded and I can show you some pics of what the app looks like and how it works. But this looks good so far. I hope to make a series of videos that outlines my process through building this bike and get a little more information out there as to what I did and what other people have done, some of the options you can do. There is not a set of instructions that comes with this kit. It is very much a know what you're doing or figure it out along the way kind of thing. It's a little bit disappointing giving this kit was a thousand bucks, just under a thousand dollars. I think there's another hundred dollars in shipping or so, plus the three month wait time. I did order this kit the 3rd of January and it is now the end of April. A little bit of that has to do with the COVID-19 pandemic. However, that's still a long wait time, which is fine. But if you're looking for here and now, this kit's not going to be what you're looking for. You won't find this in any retail stores. I believe you have to order it directly from CYC. So take that for what it's worth. 